Hi, I'm Richard Morai, Senior Minister at Unity of Phoenix Spiritual Center, and I want to thank you for visiting our website and for tuning in to today's message. If you feel inspired by today's talk, I really encourage you to make a donation by hitting that button below and making a contribution to this ministry. It'll allow us to continue these messages online and to do the great work we do here at Unity of Phoenix, which is to inspire people to live better lives. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for your support, and we hope to see you at a Sunday real soon. Good morning. So last week I began a series called Five Prayers that will change your life. And the idea was that I wanted to give you a prayer each week and let you practice it, let you actually use it for a week to see if it really works. Because for most of us, we have this belief that prayer is kind of passive. That maybe you say a prayer, you say the words, but it's not really as transformative as I believe that prayer is. And if you invite people into five chair prayers, that truly each and every one of them is transformative, if they actually practice it for a week, they'll actually experience how powerful they are, how amazing they are, how life-changing prayer can truly be. That when we establish uh, ourselves in prayer, it really changes everything. So last week I gave you the, the idea of, of let there be light. And how many of you practiced it? How many of you did your homework? Oh my gosh, I've gotten so many emails, so many phone calls from people who love this idea of let there be light. I mean, I've got people going around everywhere, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light. One lady said, I've been doing it like a thousand times a day. Let there be light. Let there be light. And it reminds me of my nephew when he went to Harry Potter World at Universal Studios. The first thing that he wanted to get was a, you know, magic wand, right? He had to have a magic wand because, you know, you can't really be a wizard if you don't have your magic wand. So he had to get his magic wand. And then the rest of the time he has his magic wand and he's like, <laughs> you know, he's slapping people with, you know, and I just imagine our whole congregation just let, let loose for one week and everything was, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light, right? And one lady said, you know, I went to my doctor, let there be light, let there be light on my body, every cell of my body, let there be light. And, and absolutely, people have been doing this process. And what I want you to see is one of the things, with well, the premise of this whole series of talks is I believe that we need more prayer. And I believe that the way that we know that we need more prayer is that we are angry, stressed out, overwhelmed, burned out, upset. And those are all symptoms that we're not getting filled from the inside. And that we're living in a, in a very fast-paced life. But the thing that needs the most change, the most transformation in all of our lives is actually our inner life. This year, one of my focuses has been on the soul and the interesting thing about the soul for me is the soul can only do two things. It either can expand or it can contract. And so the more time we spend in prayer, the more our soul expands. And the more time we spend upset and angry and that our soul contracts. And over and over again, that our soul only does those two things. It's either expanding to hold more God or it's contracting because it's empty. And what I want you to see is that your soul has infinite elasticity. Your soul can expand to an incredible levels to hold more and more God. But the only way that this really works, the only way it makes sense, is prayer only works if you actually pray. Right? And we have our chaplains, and they will pray with you. But one of the things that's true is they can't really pray for you. We can pray for others, but really you have to do your own work. You have to actually get yourself in the place where you're downloading God more and more so that you're full on the inside. And that's really what prayer does. Prayer gets you full on the inside so that you can live the greatest version of your life. And if you notice over time that you're just getting more upset, more angry, more burned out, more anxious, more fearful about life, what I want you to really see, I want you to make a mental note that when you're upset on the inside, it's always because you don't have enough prayer going in. That you're not spending enough time with God. And the solution that most of us do in that situation, we believe that as soon as we get our life right, whatever that means, as soon as we get it all organized or as soon as they're behaving the way they're supposed to behave, then I won't be upset anymore. How's that working? Right? That it really starts from the inside out. 
So let's just say it one more time together as a community. Let there be light. Now, if you weren't here last week, you're going to have to save it because I got more for you. All right? Because today, this is this week's homework. You ready for this week's prayer? This week's prayer is, well, I'm not even going to tell you yet. <laughs> you don't put it up there till I say it. <laughs> the booth is not in charge. The stage is on charge. All right. How many of you know that you might have a control issue? <laughs> right? How many of you know that if you could give your family, friends, coworkers a script, that your life would be better? <laughs> that if they would just act the way they're supposed to act, everything would be gravy. Come on, where are you? Right? I want us to see our controllers because... This prayer is going to drive you nuts. <laughs> like this is going to be your least favorite one of all five of them, and this is going to be the one you absolutely do not want to do, right? Because this prayer, now guys, throw it up there. <laughs> Thy will be done. Let's say it together. Thy will be done. One more time like we actually mean it. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Now, how many of you, did that just make you sick in the pit of your stomach? <laughs> right? Like there's no part of you that actually believes that or wants to turn your life over to God. It's like, no, thank you. I'm in control of my life. Right? And over and over again, what I want you to see is you absolutely, because we have free will, you have a God-given right to be as miserable as you want to be. But there's a point in your life where you have to decide if you're actually willing to play a bigger game than your ego, your soul, your personality can create. And that's where we get to play in God. And so over and over again, what I want you to come back to is there's a time when we have to just really decide if we want to put God first in our life. Because you don't have to. But can you imagine how crazy that makes God now, God doesn't really have a personality as weird as ours, right? But can you imagine that you've offered the, them the kingdom and they keep choosing their own drama? <laughs> really? Come on. Like, you've been offered the kingdom of heaven. You've been offered all the good that God is. No thanks. I'd rather be in control of my little drama. Right? Because there seems to be a correlation here. To the degree that we're wounded is to the degree that we think we need to be in con under control. Ooh. Right? And the more that we've been wounded, the more we think we need to be in control because if we let go, all heaven's going to break loose. And what would happen today if you actually began to pray, thy will be done? See, what we teach over and over again is that the inside creates the outside, true? Then our inner life creates our outer experience. So what I want you to see is right now in your life, your current level of goodness on the inside is creating your current manifestation on the outside. And that seems great, right? That your goodness creates the level of goodness that you're living day in and day out. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that this much goodness creates this great of a life. Now, what I want you to see about this prayer is that when you actually begin to pray, thy will be done, it moves from your level of goodness to God's level of goodness. Which do you think is bigger? Which do you think is greater, your level of goodness or God's level of goodness? And can you imagine that if you're willing to say, thy will be done, that everything in your life then gets lifted to a higher vibration because you're now playing in the infinite goodness of your creator. You're playing the game that you were designed to play from the beginning. Right? But you get to hold on. You get to live out of your ego, out of your personality, out of your woundedness for as long as you want to because you have free will. And, and free will is so sacred to God that God will never demand that you give it up. You get to hold on to your drama as long as you want to. But every one of us hits a point where we say to ourselves, there's got to be more than this. 
Can everybody think of at least one area in your life that you're tired of being stuck in? Or just one area. See, what I want you to see is this is the prayer for everyone who feels stuck. This is the prayer for everyone who feels frustrated. This is the prayer for everyone who's tried everything they know and they're still not getting what they want. Thy will be done. Will you say that with me? Thy will be done. One more time. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Over and over and over again, the moment we move from our sense of who we are to the greater goodness of God, thy will be done. Can you imagine saying thy will be done in your finances, in your relationships, in your work, in your family, in your health? Can you imagine putting everything in your life into a higher vibration, into a higher level of goodness, into a higher possibility, simply because you no longer want to be limited by your own ego? Your ego gets to be in charge for as long as you decide it's going to be in charge. But the moment you put God first, there's a higher order that takes over. Now, what I'm saying is not to get on the 101 freeway, get up to 70 miles an hour, put a blindfold on and let go of the wheel. Right? For some of us, when I say thy will be done, that's what it feels like. That we're abdicating all responsibility for our life. And that's not what this is at all. This is really about you moving into a higher level of order where everything in your life begins to vibrate at a higher level simply because you've called it into being. You have that power. You have the ability to pray this prayer that takes everything in your life to higher ground. Thy will be done. One more time. Thy will be done. See, there's actually three aspects of this. There's three aspects of this prayer. The first one, first one requires that we actually know the will of God. Have anybody ever seen a televangelist? after a natural disaster or any kind of disaster. And the Taliban usually gets on and says, he knows exactly, and it's usually a he, he knows exactly why this bad thing happened. Right? That, that this televangelist is so turned in, tuned in that he knows why this group or this problem or this situation happened because they know the will of God. Well, that's just wacky, right? <laughs> And I'm saying this from all the non-judgmental love in my heart, right? <laughs> because I don't want you to think that you have to know the will of God for anybody other than yourself. But it is really helpful if you're going to commit and to do the will of God, if you're really going to have your life focused on the will of God, that you actually know the will of God for you, not for anybody else. But what is God calling to you? See, if you say, thy will be done, you actually have to then begin to listen to your own intuition. You have to actually listen to the Spirit of God within you. And just like we have physical senses, we also have internal spiritual senses. That we have the, the gift of hearing, the gift of seeing, the gift of knowing, the gift of feeling. That all of those ways are the ways that Spirit communicates and guides each and every one of us. How many of you know that you have the gift of knowing? That when you get your guidance, when you get your intuition, it's a, from a place of pure knowing. How many pure knowers do we have? How, okay, how many of you have, get it in your body? It's like a feeling in your body and you just feel it. You can feel guidance when it comes in. How many of you are seers and you actually see things? You actually sometimes see visions and possibilities and you actually see it with your spiritual eyes. And how many of you are hearers? You actually hear the voice of God. Actually, and this isn't schizophrenia. You actually, you actually hear it. <laughs> right? This is, this is actually a spiritual gift. Right? And so what I want you to begin to see is that over and over again, you have the ability to hear and know the will of God. Now, what is enlightenment? Enlightenment really is the simplest thing. Enlightenment is listening to God and doing what you're told. Is that simple? It's so simple. It's not always easy, but it's so simple. It's so easy just to listen to God. So what's the Spirit of God directing you to do? And just go do that. But I don't want to. I don't think it's going to work out. I don't sure I'm going to like it when I get there. So no, 
right? That you have a God-given right to say no, but why would you limit your good to the level of good that you can conceive and not access the higher level of good that God has for you? So over and over again, the first part is you got to know the will of God. So to know the will of God, you actually have to be listening, so what is God guiding? What is your intuition saying? How is God guiding you in your life? It's like, well, I don't hear that, Richard. Well, you have to listen to hear. You actually have to take time and get quiet and listen. Or, and you actually have to ask the question, God, what's the highest and the best in this situation? God, what do you want me to do right here? What, what is it? What, what is it? What is my direction? How do you want me to move forward? How do I become the most prosperous person, the happiest person, the most loving person? And you actually have to ask the question on the direction you want to go and then listen to what God guides you. And then you have to be willing to do it over and over and over again. It's really that simple. Thy will be done is your soul being open and receptive to being guided, led in a different direction than you're probably going now. And you have to do it because there's no limit to how much good God has for you. There's no limit to the vibration of the height that you can go if you're simply willing to put the will of God first in your life. So the first thing that happens is that you really connect with the will of God. The second thing I want you, want you to look at is that if you're really committed to thy will be done, the next thing that happens is that you begin to let go of outcomes. How many of you have ever spent a whole night worrying or fretting about something in your life, thinking that if you worried about it, it was going to add one ounce of energy in a good direction toward what you want. What I want you to see, when you actually put God in charge of your life, when you actually say, thy will be done, guess how many hours you spend worrying about things? Goose egg. Because if God really is in charge of your life, then God really is in charge of your life. And you can do the things that you are guided to do, the things that you're directed to do, but all the outcomes you surrender to the infinite because now the infinite is in charge of your life that you can actually trust because you've seen it over and over and over again that when you say thy will be done and it works and it works over and over again, you just don't lose a whole lot of sleep. You do your little piece. You take your one little step or you take your three little steps that, are, that is your responsibility, but you don't worry about the outcome. And for many people, this is the first time they've ever known true peace because they're not worried about tomorrow. They're not worried over and over again. It's, it, there's this promise that if you put your life in the hands of God, everything's going to work out. Now, is it going to work out exactly the way you think it should work out? No. But it will work out better. It'll work out better. There's been, there's been twice in my life, major times in my life. First time was my kids. Um, we'd already had my son Ian. Uh, second child was on the way. I was serving my first ministry. And in a small ministry, as you can imagine, things get a little tight sometimes. And so now two kids on the way, I'm like, okay, God, how are we going to do this? How are these financial pieces, you know, going to work? And I just began to pray, thy will be done. Thy will be done in the greatest possible way. Thy will be done in the greatest possible way. Show me, God, direct me. Show me the way. Thy will be done. Right? And that was my prayer. Over and over again, that was my prayer. And then I get a phone call from Blaine Mays, who was the, the senior minister here at Unity Phoenix, and he was retiring. And he said, Richard, I'm retiring. Are you interested in applying? Well, you can't say, thy will be done, and then somebody invites you to apply for a job and think, uh, no, I'm too busy for that. <laughs> right? So Blaine called. I said yes. I came down. It took a long process, but it actually worked. For a long time, it worked, right? And then Five years ago, I'm praying, thy will be done. Thy will be done. The greatest possible way, God, thy will be done. And I get a text from Richard Mraz saying, you want to come back to Unity of Phoenix? And my first thought is, heck no. <laughs> Been there, done that. Don't want to do that again. And it's like, Richard, you can't pray, thy will be done, and a door opens. W what? This wasn't your plan, but this is definitely God's plan. Thy will be done. Will you say that with me? Thy will be done. One more time. 
Thy will be done. Now, I want you to say it to the place where you feel the most stuck. Thy will be. I want you to say it to the place where you actually maybe feel hopeless, where you have no idea what to do, where you've already taken your best shot, you've done everything you need to know, and maybe it's a kid that's in trouble, or maybe it's your finances, or maybe it's a healing, or maybe it's at work and you've tried everything you know how to try, and nothing seems to be opening up, and you're just frustrated, you're sad, maybe even depressed that nothing's working, and I want you to say with me, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Because the moment you say that, you move from your level of goodness, your level of understanding, your level of grace, to God's level of grace. One week, that's all I'm asking for. You give me one week where you affirm Thy will be done over and over and over again. And I want you just to notice the transformation. I want you to notice the higher level of good. I want you to notice your inner level of peace. That I believe that your peace is going to go through the roof. That instead of being up all night, you know, fretting and worrying and pacing the floor, it's like, no, thy will be done. God is in charge of my life. I don't need to worry about that anymore. Because the third aspect of this prayer, the thing that is the most powerful for me, is it takes you to a higher place, a place that you can't get to out of your personality, a place that you can't get to out of your ego, that the moment we say, thy will be done, we actually access the infinite goodness of God. Do you know where this prayer came from? Do you know where this this line, thy will be done, came from? The Lord's Prayer, right? Came from the Lord's Prayer. In fact, it's the second line from the Lord's Prayer. It's thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That the first line of the the Lord's Prayer is establishing God as in charge of the universe. Our Father who art in heaven, how holy be thy name. It establishes God as the supreme it. Whatever it is, it's supreme. And the second line of the prayer is about moving us from our human drama, our human pain, our human situations into a higher level that that is Jesus called heaven. It's to that level of blessing where the infinite goodness of God is available and we live and move in it. It's the infinite experience of grace. So the first line in the prayer is establishing God is in charge. And the second line is how we move our human life into a heavenly experience. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. And what I want you to see is over and over again that when we move out of our human drama, thy will be done is the ladder. It's the bridge to a higher possibility. How many of you know anything about the third step of AA? You know what it is? Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand him. True? Right? One of the things I want you to see why AA works, why all the 12 steps work, is because one of the fundamental teachings in the 12 steps is that you actually have to surrender your will, or you don't have to, right? Because we all have free will. You're actually encouraged to surrender your will over to a power greater than yourself. True? Amen? And what I want you to see over and over again, that's what causes transformation, If we just keep you at your own level, if we just keep you at your own ego, your own own understanding, your own personality, it's just like a dog chasing his tail. But the moment you surrender to a higher level of good, to a higher possibility, to the infinite goodness of God in you, then you move out of your level of goodness into the, the level that Jesus called heaven, into a level of possibilities that is infinitely greater, that the glory of God is right here, right now. And all we have to do is decide, I don't need to be in charge. How many of you know anything about the mastermind steps? Any Jack Boland's mastermind steps? One of the things that really changed my life when I was in my early 20s is the mastermind steps. And and you can get them online. Um, And the mastermind steps, one of the steps is about surrender. 
And the step that made the biggest difference in my life was the surrender step. Because in the surrender step, what we're invited to do is to surrender everything. And I literally did that. I surrendered my hopes and my dreams, my fears, my insecurities. I surrendered my failures. I surrendered my past and my future. I surrendered everything to God. And there's an incredible moment when you actually give God everything. In the Christian church, sometimes it's done with an altar call where people are invited to come forward and, and surrender everything to God. But what I want you to see is it's not a one-time thing. Actually, it's a daily thing. That every day we're invited to surrender everything to God. Because the moment we say, thy will be done, everything in our life moves from here to here. So where do you feel the most stuck? Where is the place where you've given up? Where is the place you literally do not know what to do next? And you're trying to be in charge, and you being in charge is simply not working anymore. Were you willing to say with me, just simply, thy will be done. Together, thy will be done. All right, so here's the deal, right? So for the next week, here's your prayer over and over again. And I want, you to I want you to start with your most stuck place. Your most stuck place. In the place where you're the most frustrated, I want you to start with that place, and I want you to feel the courage that it takes to say, thy will be done. I surrender everything I am, everything I've been, everything I hope to be, I give you my past, my future, I give you my wounds, I give you my story, I give you my doubts, I give you my fears, I give you my hopes and my dreams, I give it all to you, and I simply say, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Because at that moment, you're no longer operating out of your goodness. You're now operating out of the goodness of God, and we call that grace. For the goodness of God is greater than you could ever imagine. Can everybody see, do you see a world like I do that is kind of challenged right now? Does there, and you don't have to, right? But, but I see a world that's, that's a bit challenged right now. You know, if you, if you know anything about the 12 steps, you know there's a term called a, a high bottom and a low bottom, right? You know what that, where you bottom out, right? So there's a high bottom and a low bottom. A low bottom is when somebody's life is completely imploded. That's called a low bottom. And the low bottom means that your life just went to shambles before you were willing to do something about it, right? You don't have to raise your hand. We know who you are, right? <laughs> right? A high bottom is when your life just gets a little wobble, and that's all it takes for you to transform your life. Now, in the world today, we're going to get to make a decision. Are we going to have a high bottom or a low bottom? We're going to get to decide how bad it has to be before we decide to surrender to God and say, thy will be done. Because we could do it today. And we could move from where we are right now into the kingdom of heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. We could do it right now. Or we could go crashing to a much lower place. And the choice is absolutely going to be ours. We're either going to have a high bottom or we're going to have a low bottom. And what I want you to see that the more that you practice putting God first and surrendering deeply, thy will be done, that ripples out in all directions. Thy will be done. Will you say that with me? Thy will be done. One more time. Thy will be done. Be done. One more time, just for grins. Thy will be done. Will you pray with me? And I invite you to open your mind, your heart, your soul to the activity of God that is right here, right now. And with all that we are, all that we hope to be, all that we have been, with our hopes and our dreams and our fears and our insecurities and our wounds and everything that we have ever been, we give all that to God now. We surrender all that we are and all that we hope to be. And we simply say, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Over and over and over again, thy will be done. And we move out of our ego. 
into the grace of God. Thy will be done. In the name and through the power of the living Christ, and so it is. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week. Thanks for being here.